Flavor, prestige, and an industry-threatening controversy. This dish has everything. We're talking about the one and only foie gras, the crown jewel of French cuisine. But how did foie gras go from the food of royalty to getting banned in several countries? And what does it have to do with the French Revolution, ancient Egypt, animal rights activists, and the Titanic? Stay tuned for the answers. This one gets pretty wild. Foie gras, or fat liver in English, is a delicacy. It's made from the specially fattened livers of geese and ducks. Rich with buttery flavor, it's often seasoned with truffles or mushrooms. And if you're feeling especially classy, brandy. I like them too, in brandy sauce. Foie gras is touted as one of the jewels in the crown of French gastronomy and is world-renowned as a dish for the wealthy elite. Seriously, the dish became so prestigious that in 1788, Louis XVI traded a plate of foie gras for land in the French region of Picardy. He is serious about his foie gras. Live it up, Louis. The next couple of years are going to be interesting. But centuries before foie gras closed real estate deals, the delicacy had gained traction in ancient Egypt. The first records of preparing geese for foie gras originate from the 5th dynasty of Egypt back in 2498 BCE. Even with the far less appetizing name of enlarged goose livers, the dish proved to be a hit. A few centuries later, it was legendary. Egypt gave fattened geese to the king of Sparta, no, not that one, Agesilaus II in 400 BCE. By the dawn of the 11th century, Jewish migrants had laid the foundation for foie gras to become a worldwide sensation. It became so popular that it was supposedly the last meal served on the Titanic. Yep, the Titanic. As if there was any other Titanic. I'm sure the deliciously marinated foie gras served with celery made the night an evening to remember. Because nothing else big happened. Fast forward to today, the production of foie gras has become a majorly successful industry. In 2020, French farmers produced about 15,000 tons of foie gras, and even with, I don't know, a world-altering pandemic, they still managed to bring in over a million new buyers. Farmers raise about 35 million ducks each year to keep up with the demand for foie gras. And when we say reared, we mean force-fed. And because of this, the production of foie gras has become a hotbed of controversy. Foie gras cruelty to animal. Now, this controversy isn't new. As far back as the 11th century, a scholar raised concerns about the ethics of force feeding relative to Jewish law about the treatment of animals. Today, the argument is still raging. Animal rights activists like PETA have continued raising awareness of major ethical concerns about force feeding geese and ducks. Several European countries, Israel, and even parts of the United States, have banned foie gras production. In February 2008, Prince Charles removed foie gras from all British royal menus, saving the royals from any awkward dinner conversations. The UK had already banned the production of foie gras, but in April 2021, the Environment Minister seriously considered banning foie gras imported from other countries. So what does that mean for the production of foie gras? In an ever-changing world, can the foie gras farmers adapt and survive? Well, French scientists have proposed a method for making this delicacy a little more delicately. Instead of force-feeding geese to enlarge their livers, researchers are proposing that farmers use bacteria instead. Much better. First, farmers would give the bacteria to the geese in a serum. The bacteria stimulate the birds to build up fat in their livers, sounds healthy, helping them put on weight in a more natural, less invasive way. The first trial raised 600 geese and reportedly it doubled the birds' life expectancy from three to six months. Oh, foie gras, how the mighty have fallen. But who knows, maybe there's a comeback in this dish's future, if they can do it in a humane, nice, friendly way. I mean, just look at what happened to lobster. How did lobster go from a poor person's meal to gourmet cuisine? 
We'll see that in another episode of Origins of Food. <laughs>